This is possibly the mo most important section in this entire chapter. And the reason it is, it governs a lot of real life things. I put a little picture of a heart there. I also wrote the Nernst equation. And then I solved on the bottom, what's the electromotive force that keeps our heart pumping. So we're gonna talk about the numbers and the magnitude, but note here's an EKG, and those little blips are actually the EMFs. In this section, we have a number of examples to do. The first one is conceptual, the other ones are mathematical. Here we first wanna talk about the Nernst equation, because to be brutally honest, um, you may see cells in conditions other than standard conditions, and that is real life. That is like someone's heart. So the point we want to make as we get started is, as the voltaic cell discharges, we're going to see changes in voltage, concentration, and pressure. It's going to drop eventually until the E makes it all to zero, and then we will say the cell is dead, kind of like your cell phone when the battery runs down. So where does the Nernst equation come from? Here we have the equation from chapter 19, and it's delta G, delta G zero plus RT, L and Q. What I wanna do is substitute in the relationship that relates the E of a cell with delta G, and I get a brand new equation. What I want to do next is I want to solve for E cell. So it's just a rearrangement. I come up with the third equation. Now that's very cumbersome to handle. So what we do is we take that factor, 2.303 RT divided by F. When temperature is equal to 298, the value comes up to be 0.0592. This will be our working equation and um, we're gonna use a lot. So that is given on the exam, know how to use it. Before we do some number crunching, what I wanna do is conceptually, what is going on? So this is our concept slide. We've got a reaction we've seen before. It was our demo back at the beginning of the chapter where the E of the cell is 1.10 volts. I put the values into the Nernst equation. There is my E zero. There is my two electron transfer. And what I have here is really my products divided by my reactants. So we'll talk about how you make all that up. But for now, let's use Le Chatelier because the idea is if I'm going to change the concentration, it's the things in aqueous solution, I'm going to change the EMF of the reaction. And I put it in terms of this chapter. Someone could say the EMF is increasing. How can that come about? Well, think back to Le Chatelier. If you increased a concentration of a reactant, we would see a shift to the right. That shift to the right is going to give us a larger E cell. Another way to think about it, where else could you have an EMF increase? Well, we could take away some of the product and we would again see a shift to the right until equilibrium is reestablished. You most likely will have a concept question on both the midterm and the exam, because this is really, I'll call it, you know, the Loza bingo, it's the big enchilada. Okay, here's Le Chatelier with numbers. So I wrote down first, second, and then there's a slide that says third. So I'm gonna ask you, what is the balanced redox equation? We have two couples. We have one involving chromium and we have one involving lead. The chromium couple has a negative 0.74 volt as its E0. The lead has a negative 0.13 volt. Using what you learned earlier in this chapter, you know that the more positive will be assigned the reduction. So if you don't follow this, stop here, go back and think, because there's a lot more to come. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my balanced redox equation by beginning with writing my two half reactions. I know lead is going to undergo reduction, and here is its half reaction. And again, this is the reduction reaction. I know chromium by default is going to have to undergo oxidation. So there's chromium going to form chromium three plus aqueous plus 
three electrons. And that is my oxidation chapter. So what am I going to do in order to add these together? I have to have the same number of electrons. I multiply my reduction reaction by three to get six. I multiply my oxidation reaction by two to get six. And what I have as a result is three Pb2 plus aqueous plus two chromiums as a solid going to form three Pb as a solid plus two Cr3 plus aqueouses. I will need these things for doing my formula of Q. So it's really important to first write a balanced redox equation. Now, what is going to be my E zero of the cell? I'm going to take my time and I'm going to write it all the way out. I'm going to say my E zero reduction of what is being reduced, which is PB2 plus going to form PB. I'm going to subtract from that the E zero reduction of my chromium going to chromium three plus that is being oxidized. Then I'm going to substitute my values in. I have a negative 0.126. I subtract from that, oh, I guess it is a one three. I subtract from that a negative 0.74 and I come up with a positive 0.61 volts. So all of this was the beginning of the chapter. Now that we've done this, we're going to go on and put it into the Nernst earlier part of the vision. So third, what is the E of the cell? Well, let's write it up here. E of the cell will be E zero of the cell minus 0 0.0592 over N log of Q. Let's just draw some arrows before I write the equation in. Our E zero of cell, it is going to be 0 0.61. Our N value, that's going to be a six. And our Q is going to be the concentration of CR3 plus squared divided by the concentration of PB2 plus cubed. Again, if you're stuck, work backwards, take some time and think it through. Now, what is going to be my E of my cell? Let me take my time and do it. 0 0.61, E0 of the cell, minus 0 0.0592 divided by 6. And then I have my log of 0 0.010 squared divided by 1.00 cubed. Take some time with your calculator to work it through. 0 0.61 plus 0 0.039, it gives us a 0 0.65 volts. And that makes logical sense. We have decreased the amount of the product, okay? So we decreased the CR3 plus. We should have, we should have seen a shift to the right. And with that shift to the right, our 0.61 volts went up to 0.65 volts. So that is a very typical question you might see on a midterm. Since we're in a teaching situation, what I want to do, all of this is from the is, what if I reverse those concentrations? Again, take a pause. It'll help you better understand this, but I really am limited as I make these videos. So let me just write down what it is that's happening. We still have that 0.61 E0. We still have the six electrons, but what we have now is the concentrations are reversed. 0.01 um, o, one, o is on the bottom cubed and one is on the top. When I do my E cell, what it says is 0 0.61 minus a 0 0.059 and I come up with a 0 0.55 volts. So what I have done here is I've decreased the concentration of the PB2 plus. 
That has really resulted in a Le Chatelier shift to the left. That's how we classically would have said it. And what we can see with our calculation is our E of our cell is going to decrease. Now again, this is a paper example. And sitting on the bottom here on the right is a summary. Notice the original E of the cell is going to change based on the concentration. So sometimes you can answer a question just using Le Chatelier. Other times you really have to crunch the numbers through if they're asking you for a number. Notice it's not a massive change. Please practice this. I know something of this nature will be on the midterm. It is not impossible to do. The slide before this, you could do all that for the beginning of this chapter. The slides we have right now with the NERNS, they are just putting in values into an equation. It is not difficult. You may not understand it, but just force your way to plot. So, like I said, I broke this into two different pieces because it would, would be more than 15 minutes long. So one of the things that you may be asked is, is some reaction going to be spontaneous under standard conditions? When you look at this equation, you may say, I have no idea how to even approach this. They are probably going to provide you with information. If you look at your Appendix E, you can see almost every half reaction that we'd ever have on an exam because we're chemistry 1220. So I'm going to do the same thing here as I did in the first example. I'm going to break this up into two half reactions. I think I'll do the easy one first. I can see that two Cl minuses are going to form Cl2. And I know from my previous work that is a two electron change. And I see that is going to be an oxidation as it is written. So what's left over? I'm going to take the MnO2 as a solid. I'm going to take the 4H plus aqueous. And I'm going to go make it form Mn2 plus aqueous plus 2H2O. Now that would have been obtained as I went step by step as we did in section 20.2. But I, I, don't, I don't really need to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say here is Mn with a plus 2. Here is Mn with a plus 4. I know this is a two electron change. And again, we're towards the end of the course. It's time to kind of step up and kind of think your way through these. Yes, it is hard. And this is going to be my reduction reaction. Notice, I don't need to do a Nernst equation here. I'm just trying to figure out, is this reaction going to be spontaneous under standard conditions? So what I really want to find is my E0 of my cell. And it'll be E0 of whatever's being reduced. And again, I like to put in the actual things because it just makes it easier. I'm going to ask you to do that on your quiz because it'll show both you and I whether you understand it or not. So again, you may have to back this video up. You may have to figure out what's going on, but it's the best I can do for an online course. When I look in the table, I see the easier reduction for this couple is 1.23. When I look at the reduction for the uh, CL, what I see is a 1.36. And I come up with a negative 0.13 volts. So essentially, this is not spontaneous as written. So you know what the top of this slide says? It says, use the Nernst equation to determine a spontaneity. Well, we just did an example where we had different concentrations of the ions in solution. You can probably guess that's what we're going to do next. We're going to change the concentration of some of the ions in solution and we'll see what the result is. This ends this video. There is one entitled Part B that has, I'd say, three and a half examples. Please take time with this one, get these facts down straight, and practice by applying them to new situations.